to Edinburgh. Welcome to the Spy Flight over on YouTube. And welcome to you. Thank you for coming on in today. Hello, my name is Dave. Welcome to the channel. Welcome if you are new. Uh, we are uh, doing an ATR flight. And uh, I got to tell you, this is a uh, payware airport that you can pick up for uh, Edinburgh. And it's, uh, it's a really good one. I think that this thing has everything but haggis uh, pretty much available in this. It really is a nicely done payware airport. I got it at the marketplace. It's looking pretty good. I think it was a like... It was a 20, 25 US dollar type of a payware airport, but uh, it, it's a really nice scenery and it goes really, really well with, uh, well, with this little thing right here. This is probably one of the coolest new airplanes that you can get for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, we've been having a blast with this airplane over on the Spy Flight on Twitch. And uh, this was the one uh, that uh, I needed to do a complete cold and dark flight on. So from power up to power down uh, and uh, everything in between. And we're taking this airplane into uh, one of the uh, airports that it used to fly to all the time. Um, Logan Air has, I think, since moved their operations over to Heathrow. But London City Airport is where this thing used to, you know, dive down to the runway all the time. So really looking forward to this flight, uh, too. It's uh, It should be... It should be fairly decently fun. And again, I really, I just got this airport. I haven't really even had a chance to look at it. Of course, Edinburgh is one of the airports that has that really uh, very, very stylish control tower. And if you get to the airport, be sure and fly out of here at night because it looks really, really cool. So flight simulator, what happens here on the uh, spy flight here on YouTube? Well, today's flight, we're doing the ATR-72. So this is the longer one. This is the one you have to worry about tail strikes and stuff, especially on takeoff. This is a full uh, cold and dark flight. The add-ons that I will use for this flight is Navigraph, Simbrief, and uh, I also use Volanta for sky tracking, uh, for flight tracking. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? I uh, sometimes use Sky Vector. It's a great way to put your flight plan in and take a quick look at the... Um, take a quick look at weather and things like that. Also, uh, sometimes I will use FlightAware. You could also use Flight Radar 24, and that's to figure out what's going on at the real world, airpl at the real world airports. Uh, and uh, one of the things to do is take a look at what's going on at the real world airport and do the same thing here in, here in the sim. So uh, I'm gonna use Pushback Helper. It is a freeware pushback uh, application and it is really, really nice. Uh, I'm also using Flow Pro. Now Flow Pro is a payware, but it also has a uh, cool little uh, cool little thing that you're gonna enjoy using uh, to uh, load this airplane. The airplane has a really, really good electronic checklist and we're using real-time weather and uh, um, real-time and weather. Uh, so this is uh, this is the current time in Scotland and the weather. And I really think that this is an amazing little commuter prop liner. So what should you do if you would like to learn to fly the airplane? Uh, fly along with me. Hit pause on the video. Load up your sim. Get your airplane. Put it at uh, Edinburgh. And let's fly along. One difference, though. The weather may be different for, your, for you since this is a recorded video. So the runways might be uh, a little different, but that should be okay. <laughs> One of the cool things about this is you get to pause and restart the video. So if I do something a little too fast, you could roll back the video and maybe catch something and I'll try and go really slow with some of the things that I do. I also then like to recommend that afterwards, do your own hometown flight. So in a couple of days, take this airplane out, but take off from your own hometown airport, just so it kind of helps you remember all the cool stuff that you're learning about here. I also like to say that uh, this is not about the right way versus the wrong way. This is a flight simulator. I am a flight simulator live streamer. So what this is all about is this is what works for me. I do have a private pilot's license, so I can't fly a Cessna 152, 172, and a Cardinal. That's it. If I want to fly anything bigger than that, I have to buy a ticket like you do and go through security, and they make me sit in the back of the airplane. So uh, again, not about the right way versus the wrong way. This is how I can smoothly take off, level off, cruise, and land, and um, not make the evening news. That's going to be the simulated evening news. So that's the goal here today. So let's head on out to the airport and uh, get everything going here and see what kind of trouble we can get into. First things first, I have already gone and gotten what I call the stack of charts. In the old days, pilots would stack up their paper charts from top to bottom in the order that they needed them. This is Navigraph. And so along the bottom, that is the order of the charts that I'm going to need uh, for today's flight. Today's flight 
flight is Edinburgh to London City Airport. We're taking off on runway six. The Tala 6 Delta, I don't know what the actual name is. I should look that up. We do have a couple of airways. I'll show you how to do airways with this airplane. And then we're doing the Honolulu arrival into London City Airport. Do not forget to get the uh, RNAV transition. Some approaches to airports don't just have a star or an approach and then an ILS. You got a transition in between the two and London City has a famous one. Going to uh, 19,000 feet today, our flight time is uh, one hour and 50 minutes gate to gate. It is 442 uh, nautical miles. We are at uh, uh, stand number 28. I was looking around to see if I could figure out uh, where they do park Logan Air. You can see we got Ryanair. Uh, we've got uh, EasyJet, but I didn't see any Logan Airs looking around here. So kind of have to figure out where we can park there. One of the things that I do like to suggest, though, to uh, developers who are making really nice sceneries, and this is really nice, give us an option to turn off the, uh, the um, static airplanes like this. For the simple reason that if we're going to be flying into a big VATSIM event, uh, one of the things, oh, I should let you see what I'm showing you. The static airplanes over here. So please give us an option to turn these off for big VATSIM events so that we are able to um, uh, use all the parking spaces because a big VATSIM event is going to be kind of a big thing. And here we are, there's a little bit of light wind. The weather here is fairly nice. Winds are 040, just eight knots, broken clouds. Uh, it's pretty much the same deal uh, at uh, London City. So let's get going. We're gonna come on down here and I usually park the camera outside here and we're gonna go into the cockpit. You have to kind of come into the cockpit here to be able to go and um, um, you have to come into the cockpit to uh, open doors and things like that. So I'm gonna turn on ground power, chocks are in place. I'm gonna put the tail prop in, open the main door and the cargo door. If you're not familiar, the tail prop is this little peg that they put in the bottom of the airplane so that if they uh, load a little bit too much in the back of the airplane, this airplane will actually tip. And uh, you know nobody wants a tipsy airplane. So anyway, that's, uh, that's what that thing is, uh, is all about. It's tip prevention. So we're going to prevent tipsiness, I guess. Now then, loading this airplane is um, not the easiest, most straightforward thing to do right now. At least, you know, you can't just go down here and really load it here in pay payload. The payload page is basically, um, what this does is this lets you look at what's already there. So right now the, the airplane is empty. So what you have to do, and I call this a little bit of an immersion killer, right now if you wanna load the airplane, you've gotta go and put your fuel in using the weight and balance tab. And I guess this is nice, but there are better ways to load airplanes. So there's this little thing you can get called Flow Pro. And this is sort of replaces the little uh, um, menu bar at the top of the uh, flight simulator. And there are several things that you can go and get. But one of the things that I really use this for is I use it to load the ATR. So I'm going to go and just press it once. And it's going to go and load the ATR. And it gives you a little load sheet. And there it is right there in the middle. So 67 passengers. This matches my um, flight plan that I got from Simbrief. Cargo is 1340 kilos, fuel is 2432 kilos. The airplane is now basically loaded. Flow Pro is a payware, but this little loader is a freeware that you can get. It's a little plug-in for Flow, and it works really, really good. So now that the airplane's loaded, guess what we get to do? Start flipping switches and buttons, which is the big thing that everybody loves to do. So we're going to go ahead and uh, turn the battery power on. And when we get the battery power on, we're gonna go down and turn on the navigation light. So navigation lights, those are the little uh, lights on the wingtips and on the tail, lets people on the ground know that there's somebody sitting in the cockpit flipping switches and something might happen. Okay, everything's looking good so far. If you look down here, you're going to see um, the pilot's FMC and uh, monitor two and four turned on. So that's, we're just on battery power right now but we do have ground power set up. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on external power and you'll hear more blowers starting to kick into gear and it's gonna turn on the rest of your monitors and it's gonna also turn on the co-pilot's FMS or FMC. I'm not sure what they called it in this airplane. This airplane was a combination 
of uh, an Italian manufacturer and a French manufacturer. And I think this is the last plane that those two manufacturers did before they all became Airbus. I'm going to look here down and make sure that all of my controls are in the right place. And you can see my condition levers are up. So I have two off switches. So fuel cutoff is set for the condition levers. My uh, throttles are in good shape. They are where they're supposed to be. The control lock is in place. The brakes are on. Flaps are down. Gear is down. I also like to come down here. And this is the backlighting. And so this is the uh, panel. And you can go. And I usually will turn this up almost to bright during the day and what this does is it makes all the little labels uh, on the uh, control panels just kind of stick out a little bit it's easier to find them so next thing we do is uh, we go and turn off most of the little white lights this is sort of a precursor to airbus and we're going to start by turning on the uh, generator switches nothing's happening in fault lights but we're going to go and get rid of the white lights i'm going to turn on the windshield heat I'm going to turn on the AC wild power, but we're not gonna do the external power on AC. That's, uh, that's something that I'm told that they use, uh, the ground maintenance people use those. And then we're gonna look up here at the top, I'm going to do uh, the blue pump, the auxiliary pump, and the green pump. So hydraulics are on, and we're also gonna turn on the main supply of oxygen, because apparently the passengers are big babies and they wanna breathe or something like that. Yes, welcome to my, you know, ridiculous sense of humor. As you're starting up this airplane, like most airplanes, you're going to get a caution light every 10 seconds. At this point in the process, we're just gonna go and turn those off as we slowly get the airplane ready to go. So the airplane is essentially loaded. All we've gotta come on and do here is start doing um, preparations. And I usually start down here with the McDo, uh, or I guess it, it's, a, it's a McDo. Look, it's even labeled, so it's a McDo menu. So these are not FMSs or FMCs, these are McDo's. So the first thing that I McDo and try to McDon't is mess things up. And the whole point of that ridiculous joke is that you still can get this thing a little bit tangled up. So it's important to go slow and only per do put information in there in a certain way. So for the init page, you used to have to go and do a position in it, but one of the, the things that I learned from another YouTuber here, who is a real ATR captain, Fly with Magnar, says that the newest version of the McDo means you don't have to do a position initialization. So, wow, that's pretty cool. Let's hit the wait button. There's two ways to do this. You can go to your flight plan and you can enter it or you can just click it and hold it and it will automatically populate the information for you. This is our actual zero fuel weight. Let's also do this with fuel on board because we've loaded fuel and all that's pretty good. The only thing that we have to do is we have to go to the reserves and this we need to go to our flight plan and our flight plan on page one. This is the Lido style of chart. Uh, so this is default and go and get your final reserve and alternate fuel, which is 889. So 889 and that goes in reserves and we're done there. Let's return and now we can go and do our flight plan. So flight plan and we're gonna put in the main route and according to the uh, flight plan and if you look in the description below you will see something that looks very much like this. I call this the flight strip. It's a little notepad thing that I've been developing just to help me keep notes you know, from everything from the flight plan to, you know, how not to Americanize uh, the uh, name of the town we're in. So there you go. Um, and here's our flight plan right here. So EGPH to EGLC. And so what we'll do is EGPH, EGPH. Now you have to do the little slash and then EG. See, I say the letters out loud to myself, not because I, you know, think you need to hear me say that, but because I need to hear myself say it. Um, McDo's and FMC's do not have spell check. So there you go. You could also put in a flight ID if you want. We are flying today as Logan Air, L-O-G-A-N, Logan Air, Flight 441. And you could put your flight ID in if you wanted to. And now we're going to hit execute and it takes you to the flight plan. So according to my flight plan, our first waypoint is the TLA and the TLA VOR. And this is our, our departure. And TLA is Tala, I'm guessing. 
So Tala or Tala, here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in first. So let's put in T-L-A. And we're gonna put this in right under EGPH. And I usually execute things as I go along with this airplane. Now, the next thing on our flight plan is an airway. We're gonna be on the N64 airway to the DCS VOR. So what you do to put in an airway is click your uh, waypoint and you have options that you could put in. You could put in a new waypoint, a new destination, but in this case, we're gonna do a new airway and you don't type it in. You click it and find your airway and the airway is gonna be N864. There it is, right in the middle, click it. Now you could do your exit from the airway here. You don't type it in, you click it and let it go find all the ones that it's expecting. Okay, so it's not on page one, it's not on page two. DCS, it's on page three, and we can go ahead and execute that. After DCS, we're going to another airway. I've kind of, uh, let's, uh, let's experiment. Let's go ahead and put in the next airway, which is the L612. L612 is right there and we are gonna exit the L612 on the Honolulu VOR. Let's see if we can get Honolulu in there. So I used to back completely out of this and come back in. You know, it looks like you can just go and pick it up and do a nice little list right here. And that's it, that's the end of our flight plan. So let's return and return. And there's TLA, a couple of checkpoints to DCS, a couple more checkpoints that gets us to Honolulu, and that gets us to London City. How about that? We're ready to go. Okay, so at this point in time, in, in all of this, what I usually will go and do is I will go and start up um, this airplane's version of an APU, which they call hotel mode. And hotel mode, is basically engine number two without the propeller spinning. So to make this work, the first thing we're gonna do is turn on the prop brake. And here's the prop brake right underneath the starter. And we're gonna unguard it. And it says it's ready. I'm gonna go and engage the prop brake. And if it turns cyan, blue, pink, uh, light blue, uh, if it turns, uh, prop brake lights up, then that means it's engaged. You can also check it by looking down here and on the main engines, it says prop brake and this is the prop rotation. So now that we've done that, we have to let the ground crew know that we are gonna start an engine here and they probably ought to just be wary that an engine's starting and if the prop brake fails, we may need to uh, watch out for spinning Assassin's Creed blades. So we're gonna turn on the wing lights. That's how you let them know that you're about ready to go into hotel mode. And we're gonna go over here and I'm gonna turn on the fuel pump. We're gonna turn on the starter for engine two. I'm gonna hit the starter. If it turns blue, let's look down here and we're gonna see the uh, NH percent is going up at 10%. We will add fuel. And if you go outside, you'll hear that engine starting. And it's always good to check and make sure your Assassin's Creed blades are not uh, spinning. And as you look around, you'll even see a heat plume uh, behind the engine too. So we're good to go there. We're, we are starting to go. From what I understand, the uh, origin of hotel mode comes from um, uh, um, uh, Marine, from big ships. And that was essentially uh, how you would plug your, uh, plug your ship in uh, to, the, to the dock. And uh, that would provide you with your power. So that's essentially what you would do with that. Okay, we are now in hotel mode. Hotel mode is going. Let's go ahead and by now we've checked the weather. We've gotten our clearance from ATC. We know what our runway is and our departure. So let's go down and let's go and plug those in right now. So EGPH, runway, we know we're departing off of runway six and we're doing the Talia, Tala, uh, six Delta departure. There's no transition out of there and execute that. And then our departure should all plug, uh, plugged itself in. And there it takes us to TLA. And then there is our flight plan. 
And there is the Honolulu. And now we're going to do our arrival into London City. Yes, your runway may change, but I do like to plug things in as much as I can. So we do know it's an ILS to runway nine. Uh, we are doing the Honolulu one Charlie arrival. We are doing it's the, uh, the several options here. Uh, we're not doing the London City approach. We are doing the odd leg, but that's the Gulf. Look at the second page and you want the J. The difference is, and this took me a long time to wrap my head around. So after Honolulu, the, the arrival, it puts us out at Jacko. And if you look at the odd leg transition, you have a choice of either Jacko or Godlu. Now you know the difference. J is the one we want to get us over to our runway. So we want the odd leg J transition. And then I believe there are no transitions out of that. Nope. And execute. And then if we go through the flight plan, I'll bet there's going to be at least one route discontinuity. Yeah, there's one. And that's one the one that was leading in from Listo into, uh, into the um, star. So clear it. And you execute it. Continue down. Honolulu. Odvod. Rope. Rotmu, Nudna, I love the names here, Jacko, Nanva, Babku, and then there's the little racetrack over to Ravsa, and then this takes us over to our runway, and there's Oddleg, and everything looks perfect. We have an excellent little flight plan. Passengers by now should be aboard. We're in hotel mode, and everything's looking good here, so let's go ahead and close the front door. So they've got all of our cargo done. I'm going to go and do the cargo door. And so the cargo door is closing as we all get ready to go. Let's also go ahead and do the final load sheet, uh, weight and balance for the, for the flight. I've got a kind of an unusual view set up here for the FMS, FMS for the, for the McDo. We already discovered this is a McDo, right? It's a little bit odd and I'll show you why I've got that view set up here, but let's go ahead and we're going to hit data. And we're going to hit init and we are going to go and do uh, perf performance init. This is where we put in our cruise altitude and the cruise for today's flight is flight level 190. I think you have to put in the full altitude. So 19,000 feet. And that goes there. Our alternate airport is uh, Manchester today. So E G C C do a slash and if we have to go to Manchester we are going to cruise out at 18,000 feet and I think you have to do the full 1800 it'll convert it to flight level but there you go and now we're done with that page and we can go to performance and the only thing you really have to worry about here is your transition altitude and the transition altitude on the Tala Tala is uh, 6,000 feet so let's go ahead and put in 6,000 feet. Now there's three pages here. So let's go to the next page. And the next page wants a number called mean winds. The other word for that is average winds. And you're going to get that on page one of the flight plan, 051 at 11. So 051 degrees at 11 knots. And there we go. Go back to page one. Guess what it's time to do? It's time to close the doors. Passengers are aboard. So we're going to go ahead and close the main door. I think what they do first, though, is you take the tail prop out and then close the door. We can also come up here. And remember, we turned off the white lights. Let's go and hit external power. So external power has been turned off on the airplane and the DC generator light went out, means we're on DC generator. We're gonna do ground power. And I'm gonna go ahead, my brakes are on, so I'm gonna just pull my chocks right now. Okay, and guess what? It's time to go and get out of hotel mode and start doing airplane things. So we have a great checklist here. It's a really nice checklist. It's electronic, I've been using it and it's really good. So click the first, and you know about uh, the click zones here. What, you don't know about click zones? Go to options, go to display click spot help, and this is where you can click. So we're going to go ahead and click in the menu here and validate up and down. So we're over on the engine panel. 
You can also click all sorts of cool things elsewhere here. It really is quite nice. Oh, I also like to turn off the PFD, three, PFD throttle hint. What that does is this puts a uh, label up here that the real pilots don't use, and this tells you uh, where, what your uh, throttle position is. We don't need that. I know where my throttles are. So let's go ahead and do this. So the click spot is at the bottom and that validates, uh, selects or validates which one we're doing. And the first preparation is sort of what I call the copyright page. So, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Parking brakes are engaged. Parking brakes are engaged. Altimeters are not set. Our altimeter setting here in beautiful Edinburgh is 1028. And that's over here, 1028. Ooh, some nice high pressure today. One of the things here is it sets all of your altimeters, which is really nice. I know it destroys a little bit of immersion, but seriously, when you're in a uh, two-person cockpit and you're by yourself, you don't need that kind of immersion, especially in a big VATSIM event. Landing elevation, if you've done your flight management computer, your landing elevation should be blank and there should be a little blue indicator there. And so that looks good. FMS, comms, and navs. FMS is set, uh, but we don't have uh, the surveillance or the transponder. We'll just squawk 1000 and enter. Let's go to the nav page. We're gonna go to the ND overlay. We're gonna turn on nav aids. I'm gonna turn off the weather for the moment and traffic will be above us. So that's looking pretty good. Fuel quantity and fuel used. So this is your actual gas gauge, those right there. The number that you see over here in the engine panel is a computation. So this, is, this number here is what you've added together and it should equal this too. And you may need to change that. I never do. It's usually not off by very much, but that's what that's all about. So fuel quantity is good. Engine fuel use. So there is an option here to uh, set the reset the fuel used button. And then this is also a good chance to confirm your takeoff data. And that puts that into the airplane and it gives you your takeoff trim, which says 1.2 and your trim setting is right here. So this is the Pac-Man sound. And that means your trim's moving. Now then, it said 1.2. Uh, I've been, re I've been uh, subtracting four from this. So 1.1, 1.0, 1.9, 0.8. There we go. I subtract four right now from that because this airplane will then kind of leap off the runway a bit and that's when you have a tail strike. And I've had far too many of those. So I'm subtracting four. Uh, 737NG driver says subtract three. Okay, memo panel, all of the usual suspects are in there. Power management, power management is set to take off and we are good to go. So CDLs are on, this is the before, before propeller rotation uh, checklist. FMS and takeoff data are confirmed. Trims are set, the tail prop is on board, the doors are closed, the seat belts are not on. So let's do seat belts and we'll also turn on the devices. So turn off your cell phones and we're gonna arm the emergency exit lights. Now then, it's time for pushback and we are going to use a free application called Pushback Helper. This thing is absolutely amazing. Yes, you could also use GSX. You, uh, I think there's a couple of other pushbacks. This one's free, it's at flightsim.to and it is outstanding. So we're gonna call the tug, or in this case, I believe the sled. And so we'll just do a straight push back here. You can do speed, you can control jetways. This is my go-to pushback application, works with everything, especially if I'm in a big VATSIM event, I don't have time to you know, watch GSX, which is really good, I like it, but sometimes I just don't have the time. And we'll wait until we're connected. And now we're gonna, yeah, the, the pushback truck always goes this little jerk-like thing. Okay, so with all of that, we're gonna go come up here and we're gonna turn on the beacon because we're gonna roll the airplane about. We're also gonna look down here, go to aircraft. We have pulled the chocks, we're ready to go. 
Come down here, parking brake off, and reverse. Oops. Well, we uh, actually pushed the... Uh, are we going back? Yep, we are. Okay. We also did the, uh, um, we also did the, um, first officer's armrest. And we could also do a little bit of a spin here. You can go to the left. And so you can push your tail if you need to. While we're doing this, we could also, we've done the, uh, before prop rotation checklist. So seatbelts are on, beacon is on. So we could go ahead and uh, release the prop brake. So let's go ahead and release the prop brake while we're doing this. And it should go ready and unlocked. At that point in time, you've got a propeller spinning. That's probably pretty good. We could have pushed back a little better. Now there are pushback applications that you can plan your route. And if GSX is set up correctly, it'll put you right on the line but I think that this is probably just as good for us. I'm also pushing my condition lever up to auto now for the engine that's going. We're straightening out the nose wheel, hit stop, and let's do the parking brake, and release the tug. I'll look up here, and when the tug driver starts moving back, at that point, I know we've successfully released the tug, and then I can turn off pushback helper and be really grateful to the developer who made that. Okay, let's go ahead and we're gonna go and start up engine number one. So pump, fuel pump on, engine number one starter is on. Look down here, there's that number five, six, seven, get ready with your fuel lever, 10, 10% fuel. And then if you get a chance, come on out and have a nice look at your propeller spinning. And the animations, I think, are pretty good. There is even a shadow of the propeller on the side of the airplane. How about that? Okay, once your propeller is up and it's steady, go ahead and move your condition lever up to auto. And then you can see the uh, propeller it increase RPM. And you will hear a sound increase too, which is really good. Oh, so cool. And if you're wondering, the condition levers are these, these things right here. And we are now getting close to the before taxi checklist. But we have a few things to clean up here. First of all, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to turn the engine starter to off. I'm gonna turn on the probe heaters now that there's nobody underneath the airplane. I'm going to do a cabin call and let the cabin crew know that we are gonna start rolling the airplane around. FWS, recall everything. Uh, Anti-icing alpha, did I miss one? Oh, the first officer side. So the FWS is clear, cockpit comm hatch is closed, condition levers are auto, anti-ice is it needed. The true, we gotta turn on the true system. And that's this button right here, it is guarded. So what you do is click the guard, turn it on, and then you're done. It will automatically re-guard itself like that. So the true is set. We're gonna look over here and do the anti-skid test. While we're doing that, I'm gonna hit the flaps button, flaps to 15, and it's going to do test, 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 and there's green, and it says that's good, so flaps are good, nose wheel steering is engaged. It's time for the taxi checklist. Taxi and takeoff lights on, taxi light goes on. We've already done a cabin notification. Let's go. So get ready down here. Feet on your rudder pedals if you've got them. Make sure they work. And then as soon as you release a brake, do your tow brakes because this airplane will start rolling. And so here we go. We're starting our uh, taxi. You can use the nose wheel tiller. My nose wheel tiller is getting a little weird. You can see it's uh, jerking around a lot. It's getting really cranky. So I'm probably gonna have to replace it soon. It's really annoying. I'm uh, switching my maps over. This is some more of those hidden click zones that you need to be sure and look at. Let's do the brake check. So we're rolling and the airplane stops. Very nice. So I'm gonna go and change my map and I'm gonna make the map a little bit bigger. And the next checklist item, brakes are checked. Uh, let's see, FMA is checked, takeoff configuration check. So we'll do that when we get out of the gate area here. 
If you've got a gamer chair or any kind of a chair you sit in and you use rudder pedals, be sure that you um, <clears throat> have the chair locked, especially if you use rudder pedals because <laughs> you'll just tilt back. And that has happened at critical phases of flight for me before, and it has been uncomfortable. So out we go. And this is really the first time that I'm seeing uh, how nicely done this uh, Edinburgh. We're, go we're gonna go here next week uh, on the spy flight. I am definitely looking forward to that. And so we can check this out some more. This is actually a really cool part of the world to fly. And so this is one of the reasons why I'm so excited to, you know, have the little, um, the Logan Air ATRs because they are flying ATRs around the world. Uh, and Logan Air is one of them. And getting to fly around Scotland is a really cool place to go. Might have a little bit to do though. Some of my ancestors came from Scotland too. And I'm kind of thinking that might be a fun place to move someday. At least travel, but maybe move too. And out we go. I know this airport, so that's why I don't have a taxi chart set up. But if you don't know the airport, it is really mission critical to uh, have a taxi chart set up. You can see mine is right here. So we're getting ready to come over to the Alpha Taxiway. And here we go. This, the signage on this airport is really looking nice. And we'll just continue on over here. There's a nice view of the airport over there. The incredibly iconic control tower that they have here is uh, really nicely modeled. Plus the other thing that's really cool about the control tower here is you also get um, uh, the, the, uh, the color of the tower actually changes at night, which is really awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're gonna release the uh, control lock, hit the t uh, takeoff config check. It turned green up there. One of the things about Flight Simulator is there's some incredibly awkward button pushes on a, on a few things. And those are basically, um, you know, you push a button down on the console, and, you know, on the pedestal and you look on the opposite side of the airplane. It's great if you're a pilot in a real airplane, but in flight sim, sometimes it gets a little bit um, awkward. And you've noticed I'm tapping the brakes here. This airplane will speed up on you while you are taxiing. I don't know if that's accurate. It's just what happens with my airplane. Okay, and we are good. Takeoff config check is good. So before takeoff checklist is next, as we go past the fire station, and the blue thing that you see over there is one of their practice. So this is where the firefighters, they can actually light fires in that thing. And this is how they learn how to pull people out of airplanes that are on fire to fight engine fires and things. There's a lot of airports have those set up. Okay, checklist. Takeoff briefing has been done, but poorly. The gust lock is off. Flight controls are checked. Transponder and TCAS. Let's look up here. See, the cool part about this is uh, the real pilots. There's two of them doing this. TCAS is now on. We should have been squawking mode Charlie. Uh, on the taxiways, that's a VATSIM thing, and I always try and do it. Boost function, airflow, cabin crew's been alerted. Engine bleeds are on we have flight lights. So uh, flight controls, we're gonna do several things. We're gonna hit heading and we're gonna arm nav and we're gonna stay in the center of the taxi line here. We're also going to hit the IAS button twice. Oh, you know why IAS isn't being nice to me? I haven't set our takeoff altitude. So I think that the uh, altitude here is 5,000 feet. So that's the initial climb. By the way, if you are a pilot on VATSIM, and it's a very small number that we're changing here. To find out what that is, look down here at your departure, routing altitude. Uh, it looks like the top altitude is 6,000 feet, not five. So now let's do 6,000 feet. 
and let's hit the IS button a second time. Uh, let's see, it's armed. And then it says pitch hold. So over here we have a heading select is set, LNAV is armed, pitch hold is set for your takeoff. Okay, so we got that done. Should have done that probably before we were taking off. Uh, or taxiing. I have not done heading hold yet. I usually do that when we get out on the runway. Or you could set it right now. I usually, uh, there's an easier way to do that. And I'll show you that in just a second. ATC just called, told us to get going. So we're gonna do strobes, final cabin call. So strobes letting them know that we are, uh, it's our runway, external lights. Okay, now there's a thing on the checklist. It says the lateral flight director bar. And as we come around here, that's the up and down green bar that you see there. We would like to have that centered for takeoff. Notice I haven't done landing lights yet. Uh, you do landing lights when you're lined up down the runway. It's one of the last things you do. Let's everybody know this airplane is serious about doing that flying thing and hurtling down the runway at breakneck speed. Uh, but also uh, the landing lights are really bright on airplanes. So it's just courtesy. You're gonna blind somebody that might be sitting over there until you're uh, pointed down the runway. Okay, so now we're all getting all lined up here. And that looks good. So now that we're lined up, brakes for a second, hit your heading hold button. That looks good. I think we're ready to go. I'm gonna do landing lights and look down here. And this is slowly centering itself. So I think we're ready to go. Actually, it's command, no, it's commanding a turn. After takeoff, we do a turn, a slight turn to the left is what we do. Okay, after we go 640 feet. Flying time, release the brakes. Uh, throttles, I gently start to move those up a little bit and then go right to the notch point. I'm gonna arm my, um, um, speeds for takeoff. So it's sort of like managed speed in an Airbus. And I will usually push the nose down a little bit till 80 knots, 80 knots, release the tiller. About a hundred knots is rotate. There's rotate, gently pull, and the airplane will float off the ground. Otherwise you'll tail strike because it's a long airplane. Positive rate of climb, gear going up. And one last look at a very cool airport. So long, Edinburgh. And let's see, how are we doing here? It is a, not a jet, so you do not climb like a rocket here. And our speed is slowly coming up. Let's go to climb power. Climb power is good. And there's our commanded turn off to the left. Let's get a little help from the autopilot. Let's do yacht ampers first. We've got the gear up. So the next thing that we're gonna do is come up here and turn off the nose light. And now we can go and let's do AP. Oh, let's hit IAS too. And now hit AP. And the autopilot should correct my lousy course management. It is a bit breezy to, up here today. And that's gonna put us back on course. Our speed is coming up, up. We're above the uh, white triangle for flaps. Flaps should go up. And a beautiful day in Edinburgh. Traffic is light today. ATC just called and said direct to D13 TLA. DTO. So this is the one checkpoint before TLA. So in this case, it says DO26. And execute. And so there's our turn. 
So we don't have to do the whole turnout over the water. I assume that that's a noise abatement not to have airplanes flying over residential neighborhoods and stuff. But we're sim pilots today and we need to get down to London. Okay, the, uh, we did the lateral FD bar and the rudder cam. Everything's good there. After takeoff checklist, landing gear is up. Flaps are up. Power management is set to uh, climb. The engine bleeds are still on. Taxi and takeoff lights are out. Next thing to do is altimeters at 6,000 feet. ATC just called, said climb and maintain 17,000 feet. So that's eliminate the uh, altitude restrictions, which you kind of have to watch yourself in this airplane. So I'm dialing the altitude and looking at a very small number over the altitude uh, indicator on the primary flight display. So there is 17,000 feet. That's the number I was turning. And this is trying to put us on our flight, flight path. And I think GSX is uh, that when you see the two little arrows pointing out, out, outside, that's GSX trying to tell you that it, it wants, that it's, it's still engaged. Uh, let's see here. We do have, so surveillance is on and we're going to go to the ND overlay. I'm going to go to terrain. Traffic is above. Nav aids and airports are set. And there is our terrain. Let's go ahead and recenter the heading bug and a nice takeoff. For me, the nice takeoff is we didn't drag the tail, which is an important thing to do. This is not a particularly fast airplane. It's a cool little airplane and I like it a lot, but it is not fast. So this is not the airplane that you take to get someplace quickly. Quick scan up here, starter is good. Pumps are on. All the other white lights are out. Airplanes continuing to climb. Reset the heading bug again now that we're on course. And we are heading direct to this uh, checkpoint right here. So this is where we're going. D13, so 13 miles from TLA is how this is um, shown here. But over here, it's called DO26M is that checkpoint. 170 knots is what you climb at in this airplane. That seems to be its happy place. We're allowed to go above that 6,000 feet. ATC just called, said climb and maintain. Final cruise, 19,000 feet. ATC is very, very nice to us today. Now then, if you are going to be doing the, a flight like this on VATSIM, there is that altitude restriction of no higher than 6,000 feet here. Um, I, I, I went flying through that one time and uh, Scottish Control got on the radio and said, yeah, everybody does that. Don't do it again. And the, the reason being is they have arriving airplane, airplanes that they are keeping above 6,000 feet. So that's why in this operation area, departures are below 6,000, arrivals are above. Oh, we're also above 6,000 feet. Reset the altimeter, standard altimeter. This is why I love the checklists here. I forget stuff in this airplane all the time. And that procedure is complete, nothing active now. It is flying time. When you're doing the flight sim and stuff like this, if you've got a little time, go back to the cabin, look out the window. If you don't have cabin views, you know, go over here and just take a look outside the window like that. If you like airplanes, if you like travel, which I assume you do because you're even watching flight simulator stuff. I mean, this is what it looks like right now outside the windows of an airplane heading south out of Edinburgh. And if you haven't gotten to travel a lot like I haven't, this is absolutely the best thing in the world to be able to see how, uh, how incredibly detailed it is. It's a little bit like a game, but one of the stories that I like to tell about how one day I was just doing stuff around, you know, Spy HQ here, 
vacuuming, to be honest, but, uh, you know, cleaning. And sometimes I will go and start one of those YouTube videos of uh, people who travel and they'll just take their cell phone, stick it in the window of an airplane, record the whole thing. And one day I was watching a flight and as walking by, you know, just, just had it up there for something to watch while I was cleaning. And I looked there and I said, I was looked at the screen and says, wow, that looks just like Microsoft Flight Simulator. And then it kind of hit me and says, wait a minute, <laughs> that's the real world. You'll see the wind turbine farms that are all over the place here. At night, you see uh, the little red dots from the uh, aircraft anti-collision lights on the wind turbines, which is pretty cool to see. And we're about ready to head on out to the Tala, the Tala, the TLA VOR is our next turn. Passing 9,000 feet. Everything's good here. I'm sure I've forgotten something, but I can't imagine what. There's our turn. The airplane handles it so well. Everything's looking good here. I do need to recalibrate my controls a little bit. So I need to recalibrate my throttles just so they stay right, you know, together in the notch like that. The airplane itself, uh, the inside of the cabin is fairly nicely modeled. So if we come over here and kind of move yourself up into the seat, this is about me where my head is in a seat. And if you look up, you can see, yep, devices and seat belts. In fact is we're 10,000 feet now. Let's do landing lights off. Let's do devices off. Let's do a cabin call. So the flight attendants will say, hey, you can use your devices now, but seatbelt sign is still on, so you need to stay in your seat. Reset that heading bug again. I make a point of resetting my heading bug after a turn, even though the, uh, the McDo and LNAV has got us, I like to reset the heading bug whenever I can. Let's say we, the AP messes up, there's some problem and I have to fly manually. If I do, if I keep resetting my heading bug, I always know to look for, you know, the, uh, the heading bug here that says, oh, fly this way, you know, go in this direction. That at least helps you, okay, I was supposed to be going this way while I'm trying to figure out all the other things that I might have messed up there. Everything else is looking good here. So we're going to go down to the progress page. Progress shows in our climb, we are 431 miles from London City. We are seven miles now from our top of climb. The ETA says, I believe 15 hours, 26 minutes. So that's a uh, Zulu time. It says we are at 1339 here. Now that number is going to change once we get to cruise. Also, you see the estimated fuel on board at London City is minus. Don't worry about that. We're still in climb mode. We still need to go through a few checkpoints. That number will stabilize fairly quickly. So no reason to panic yet. If you do, if you're worried about your fuel, you can come over here and using the click spots, we can go and take a look. This is the AC panel. Here's fuel. So let's see, we have 11, 110 kg, 112 kg in the right tank. We've got more than enough fuel to get down to London City. So you can always go and check those sorts of things. The other uh, panels you can check, there is the door panel and oxygen here. So here's oxygen. Doors are closed. So we got a couple of doors. And then there's the AC panel again. How do we know where to click? Remember to go to options, display click spots. So we're over here. So you can choose the ND, the system page, the perf page or the map page. This is how you uh, can change the different pages in there. And that changes the range. Very nice. 
I've uh, started using that and it really is super duper helpful. And you'll find that in options and display click spots. I usually leave this on aircraft. And there we are at the Tala uh, VOR. And our flight plan route continues. We've made the turn, so reset your heading bug. And there we go. And we seem to have made it. We are flying pretty decently. The plane is not buffeting about. The scenery outside today is absolutely magnificent. It's got to be a really nice day uh, to be flying in uh, Scotland. I imagine it's also a really nice day to be flying uh, just about all over the UK today. And it'd be really nice to be flying in Ireland because then you could go to Dublin to Arthur's Place. And if you don't know about Arthur's Place, that's where they make Guinness. Okay, so there is our departure. We're clear from there. I will usually zoom this map out a little bit. One of the things this, this will do is it will show you boundaries between airspace, and that's really kind of helpful on VATSIM, especially if you're really busy. We're not going to be going back to Edinburgh, so we can go and hit edit, and I'm going to get rid of those charts. We don't need them anymore. So now all I have is the arrival chart. So there's the arrival. I have the transition. I have the ILS. And I have the parking gates. I think that Orbix has updated the uh, London city scenery. I need to go and get that update done. So I need to go and do the update. One of the things that the real world pilots can do and that you could do too. So over on, this is page one of the flight plan. If you go to page, ah, here's the actual flight log. And so let's see, there is the Tala VOR. So this is where we were at Tala. I'm horribly mispronouncing it, I'm sorry. Our next ch checkpoint is Yunuru, I'm guessing. How are we doing? Are we coming to Yunuru? Oh, we just got to Yunuru. And in fact, we are passing it right now. So look at your fuel. Fuel says 2190. Okay. Look over here at Yunuru. We should have had 2037. So this is another way to check your fuel while the flight management computer is catching up and say, oh, look at this. We are, we're, we're on as far as fuel burn. And that, that's really pretty helpful. That's a really helpful thing to be able to do if you're worried about fuel and stuff. So we have just passed Yunuru. Our next check point is Asras, I guess. So as we come over here, let's look. There is Asras. So if we want to check our fuel, if we've got more than uh, 1,984 kilos, then that means, guess what? We have more than enough fuel to not only get to London City, but fly around for half an hour, fly up to our alternate airport, and have 15 minutes of even contingency fuel. So that's all the fuel that we need, and that's really cool. And so you can do some of the advanced fuel management. This is things that the real world pilots do every day. Every day. We are past 15,000 feet. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a cabin call, let the flight attendants know that they can get up, start getting the uh, drink cart ready to go. And if you're a passenger, of course, you really, really do not want to um, have Diet Coke. There are more than a few flight attendants that have uh, been in chat over on the spy flight on Twitch and have said, yes, that is not a myth. Diet Coke sucks in an airplane, so. Coming on back here, this is, uh, there is a uh, lavatory back here. There's nothing to see. There is our entryway, the stairs. I believe that there, um, so there's the stairs. I think that that little peg that goes in the tail of the airplane, there's a special compartment in the back of the airplane that that goes into. There is a monitor up. Oh, there's the phone for making announcements. And you can even say, it says attendant, call, emergency, and PA. There is the little door for rolling the uh, uh, carts in. And so there's the two carts there. 
I don't think you can lower this down. The coffee machine is in there. There's some hot water for tea. And that's pretty good. So there's uh, the bathroom back there. This is the longer ATR. So what was it? The maximum passengers on this, I believe, is 72, 70, 72, something like that. The seats are really nicely modeled. If you look up here, they even did the rows. The row numbers are modeled. That's pretty awesome. Really good work. Okay, so as we come up here, here's another flight attendant seat. Another little uh, phone. I think, I don't know that that's a lavatory or not. I think, I'm not sure if that's a closet or a lavatory in the real airplane. And then we can go and open this door and come through here. And this is that forward cargo area. So they've got places for luggage storage. So I think this is like the main luggage area. And then you can come over here and hit the handle. And you see the door open side by side here. Here's our cockpit. And we're gonna close that. See this, I believe this is the jump seat. I think that's the jump seat or that fold, folds out for the jump seat and you sit in front of the door. These little things right here, that these little black holes, this is a ladder and that is the cockpit escape hatch. A lot of stuff is modeled in this airplane. It's really quite amazing. Okay, coming up on our final cruising altitude. So since I've got the airplane in uh, managed speed mode essentially, and you can tell that you're in managed speed mode because over on the speed tape, the number and the uh, bug is pink. So, you know, speed is in pink mode. If you want to click it into manual mode, then you adjust it with the big knob. But we are coming up here. So, flight level 190, it's flashing at us. A good indicator that the airplane knows, ah, we are coming up on our final cruising altitude and we um, are going to stop there. And now our bug is starting to come down a bit. At that point in time, you're gonna notice that the airplane starts to speed up a bit. Fact is over here, our ground speed is 233 knots already. And then I usually wait until we get about 200 feet away from final cruise. And then that's when I switch the um, uh, condition, the uh, 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 power management to cruise mode. So there's 200 feet. I'm gonna go to cruise. And we'll settle into our final cruising altitude. And then at that point in time, you're gonna see once we get to final cruise, the bug over on the speed just jumps up here to 245. And then this just starts to climb. Uh, at this altitude, I don't think we actually get to 245 knots, but the uh, airplane will handle the speed. We are in cruise mode, we're leveled out. I'm sure there's a passenger back there that has had too much coffee. Seat belts, mad dash to the lavatory. So beacon is on, nav's on, strobe's on. Oops, I could have turned off my uh, wing lights. It's kind of hidden, so I forget it under the logo light. Wing lights, we didn't need those when we went to the beacon. We remember we turned those on when the airplane was in hotel mode. And you can see the speeds coming up. And if you look down here at the McDo, now it gives us 389 miles to London City. We're gonna be there at 1550 Zulu, 1515. We're 257 uh, miles from top of descent. And notice that the EFOB numbers are starting to decrease. With the EFOB numbers decreasing like that, that's a good thing. Our speed is still trying to increase there. Our ground speed's not bad, about 257 knots. 
We are coming up on the DCS um, VOR. That's called Dean Cross is the VOR that we are about ready to come up to. So another thing that we could do is we could come over to the flight plan and because we haven't seen, uh, where's Dean's Cross? There's Dean Cross. There's the VOR. And at Dean Cross, we should have 1,936, 1, 1,936 kilos at Dean Cross. And you can see these little dots under here. That's where the pilots would actually write the numbers in and keep a flight log here too. So 1936 is our fuel. And we're still about five miles from Dean Cross. And if we look over here, we are at 2100. So we're still ahead of the fuel game. We're still in good shape. This EFOB number will start to drop quite a bit after we go over this next checkpoint. Still showing our landing at 1515 Zulu. So we still have a bit of a flight here today. Oh, I need to go and change the TCAS into normal. Weather radar works in this airplane. So the weather radar works. So what we can do is come over to the weather radar page and what we will do is we could turn weather radar on, pull this out and maximize this. So you pull out the gain, turn it to max, and then push it back in and then come on back here and go out of terrain mode and go to weather mode. And there's our weather ra radar. I don't think we're gonna see an awful lot there today but you could also use weather radar in this airplane and that appears to work. I'm gonna go back to terrain here and we really don't need this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just turn this off. We can go ahead and probably leave the gain to max. It's probably not a big deal. And we've just passed Dean Cross and the EFOB, EFOB number should continue to drop Still looking at a landing at 1515 Zulu, 374 miles, 243 miles to top of descent. And the thing to do is to just go and enjoy the incredible view. Absolutely one of the best parts of Microsoft Flight Simulator is getting to just look out the windows. If you've got something like Sim Toolkit Pro or Volanta, one of the things to do is also, while you're looking out the windows and stuff, there's Dean's Cross. If you go and zoom in, it tells you all the little towns that you've gone past. So we're going pa uh, coming up on High Lorton. Excuse me, sorry about all of the sniffing and stuff that you're hearing. Allergies are in full gear here, afraid. And so this is another great tool that you can use as you're, uh, you know, basically playing around, you know, the world is our playground here. And this is how we get to go and just go and, you know, be free tourists without having to load down the credit card with airfare or, you know, take off our shoes at security. So, you know, that's what makes it really nice. And then just getting to go ahead and fly. If you've got some favorite music now is the time to go and you know make some food refresh the coffee turn on some music and enjoy your flight which i think is outstanding so what do we do at this point usually on a youtube video like this all we're going to do is cruise nothing else is going to happen the only thing i will do is periodically uh check my fuel i'm trying to do that like the real pilots do i will also center the heading bug whenever we make a turn. Um, let's see, it is currently 1355. We're gonna be landing after 1500. So I might go and try and find a, um, a METAR for London City. Other than that, it's time to go and refresh the coffee cup and um, get ready for our landing. So what I usually do at this point is say, we are 233 miles from top of descent. 
And at this point in time, what I will do is I will restart. Uh, I'm going to pause the recording now. So you don't just have to sit here and listening to me, you know, pathetically tell bad jokes. Um, you know what's going to happen. And when we get to 75 miles from top of descent, so that's in uh, 54 minutes. So I'm going to hit stop, pause, you hit pause, and then when your airplane gets to 075 nautical miles, go ahead and hit play again, and we'll catch up then and do the landing into London City Airport, okay? So right now the airplane is flying along so well, and I will go and see you at 75 miles from top of descent. And there we are, 75 miles from top of descent. As you can see, the estimated fuel on board number has kind of changed just a little bit too. And welcome back. Thank you for, uh, oh, hope, hope, thank you for sticking with me. I hope your flight is going well. Uh, this has been a fun flight. The clouds are starting to thicken up just a little bit though, as we start to uh, get closer to London. So more clouds out there. One of the things that you can do is uh, if you use Navigraph, Navigraph has a weather tab right now, and it's also selectable. So you can go and you can select that uh, uh, METAR and if you want to go and plug that into your um, into your flight notes like I do, you can go and do that and uh, get that information. And that's incredibly helpful. So 75 miles from top of descent, what do we have? We're coming in on the Honolulu. Oh, look at that, we've already passed Honolulu. And so uh, ticket, uh, Texax, I guess. We have a speed restriction here at Nudna. We have a 12,000 foot altitude at Inlam and 9,000 at Jacko. That's the one we care about is that 9,000 feet. So we're looking pretty good here, 70 miles to top of descent. Now with this airplane, if we were on VATSIM and ATC was clearing me to descend, uh, uh, as soon as they clear me to descend, that's when I would go and dial my number here in altitude select. This airplane, eh, not so much. Uh, you really need to wait until you're about five miles from that top of descent before you start dialing in altitudes. I also have neglected to reset my heading hold and we're gonna make our turn now at uh, TixX, I guess. And there we go. So 67 miles to top of descent. The airplane itself is supposed to uh, have uh, auto switching for uh, VORs and ILSs. Here's the thing, it hasn't really worked too well for me. Now, it could very well be that I'm not doing it right. So, but uh, I usually go in and I plug in the uh, ILS that I need for uh, in the standby. So we kind of come down here and use that number pad on the lower right and change a number in the upper left. So we can go and prepare for that. ILS for runway nine is going to be 111.15. So go over here, click the standby frequency, and then slowly and carefully, 111. The decimal point itself doesn't work all the time, so you gotta be careful, 15. So if you're very slow and deliberate when you type these numbers in, that really kind of, kind of helps. Uh, minimums, we can set minimums and up oh, that heading bug again. There we go, minimums. So what is our minimums for this approach? It is, I believe that this is a category B airplane. It may even be an A, I'm not sure. Category C is, uh, you know, 737 in the Airbus and stuff. 431 feet, we're gonna call that our minimums for today. So come over here and this is the uh, MDA switch here. And then 431 feet. You can see there's a number that shows up there. Where the closest we're gonna get is 430 feet. So 434 are minimums. There's 430 and see how it's flashing. So what you wanna do is set her up and slide over to the co-pilot side and hit that uh, DH MDA switch again. And then as you look down here, you can see it stop flashing. So that takes care of that part of the problem. The next thing that I like to do is if we are a ways away from our next checkpoint in the sky, which we are, Advad, I'm gonna reset my heading bug again, and then I'm gonna do the inbound course. So the inbound course to this ILS is 092 degrees. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch this 
from LNAV to NAV mode, basically. So from the flight management computer to the NAV radios, this will still hold your course. So switch it, and then you're gonna change a number down here, the course heading, and that's what you're gonna go over here, and that's gonna be 092. And of course, it is a ridiculously small number that no, no human can see, at least not, not, I, not, not anybody that I can, maybe if we tilt up a bit. So 092, there's four, five, six, seven, sorry my voice is really getting messed up too, 08091 and 092. And the number that I was changing was this small course number down here. And now I'm gonna go back to LNAV mode. And, and that should be, it, it, if you're far enough away from, a, uh, from, a, um, from your next checkpoint, it, it's really a snap. If you're really close and the airplane needs to make a turn, at that point in time, I'd suggest that maybe wait until after you make your turn. Okay, so all that's done. So we've got our inbound course, 092. We have our ILS. Did I do it right? I always like to verify because sometimes I do this really quickly. 111.15, that's good. Minimums are good, so all of those little things are verified, and that's the good news. We are coming in right now on the Honolulu arrival, so there we are, we're heading to Odvod. At Jacko, we wanna be at 9,000 feet, and then we pick up the transition, and there's Jacko at 9,000 feet and 210 knots. And then there is the, what I call the little racetrack here. And so this takes us up here from Nanva, Babku, LCE, LCE, still staying at 9,000 feet. And then you come into Ravsa. And they use this as one of those traffic flow management types of tools. So if you've got, if you're coming in here and we're between Babku and LCE 21, and there's nothing between me and Ravsa, they're gonna say, go direct Ravsa. They wanna get you in there, okay? But if there's a bunch of other planes, they may actually make you do the whole racetrack. While if there's an airplane ahead of you and there's nothing ahead of it, they'll move that to Ravsa so that they can keep the traffic flowing. So really what I will do is somewhere between Jacko and Babku, I'm gonna try and do a direct to Ravsa and, direct, and descend to 6,000 feet. We'll hold that past Gapki, and then at Osvev, we go down to 3,000 feet and 210 knots. Here at Oddleg, as we are doing our turn into the ILS, 2,000 feet, maximum 185 knots, believe that 185 knots. Even in a slow prop liner like this, that's a, you're, this is a tight turn to final, okay? And the altitudes are important too because we've got uh, Gatwick and Heathrow pretty close by. So you've got to watch those altitudes too. And then over here on the approach, we have a fairly steep approach down to the runway here. So in fact, I believe that this is one of the steepest approaches to a runway in a major metropolitan airport. So, and I think London City, even though it's small, it's in the middle of London, that's, that's major enough for me. So we come in at 2,000 feet, three miles out, and down we go. I'm gonna wanna have gear out, flaps down, approaching my landing speed, and all of that good information, all that stuff done before I start down for the runway. And then we're coming in on runway nine. Because we are a prop liner, I'm gonna try and plant the airplane firmly on the end of the runway so that I can make the echo taxiway. And again, there is a update for the Orbix scenery, which I have. I haven't gotten it yet. I need to go over to Orbix to get it. I think I bought it from the, I think I bought the airport from the store. I think I may have bought it from the store, so I might have to, you know, I, I may have to wait till it gets into the marketplace before I can grab that. So that's kind of what the plan is. The other thing that we can do is we can get ready for our arrival. And the only thing that we really can do at the moment is go to performance. We're in cruise mode. And by the way, this is where we put in uh, the uh, average winds. You can see it's doing all sorts of fuel for us. Calculations, it's really pretty cool. Let's go to the next page, which is approach. Uh, London City, approach uh, the, um, 
Runway 9. Ooh, transition altitude. It's 18,000 feet. Wrong. We are in London. Transition, it says 6,000 here. So that's transition altitude. That's going up. Transli trans transition level is going down. And if you don't have a number here, generally I've heard the rule, the, the unofficial rule is just add 1,000 feet and there's your transition. So that's 7,000 feet. So let's go ahead and put in 7,000 feet. And that can go in there for transition. QNH is set to inches of mercury. I think there's a place to change this to um, hectopascals. I don't know where. I just wait until I set the altimeter, and then I will go in and um, then I will go in and uh, the uh, altimeter here does the conversion for you. So I it, I just go and do it that way. The only other thing to do is winds, and this is an unusual airplane. It has direction sustained winds and wind gusts. So this is one of the first airplanes that I've seen that has wind gusts in here. And we can get that information several places. For this flight, I'm getting this information here on the METAR page where the winds are 060 at eight knots with no gusts. So you do 060 degrees slash 08 slash zero for gusts. And that takes care of that. And there's our winds for landing. VAP, our approach is gonna be 107. I generally, I'll, I'll manually set the bug here. I'll manually set the bug for 110. And that's how I do my landing. Okay, LNAV is supposedly engaged. It shows us a little off to the side here. So let's see if it fixes things at Oddvod. Here is our top of descent indicator just by Nudna here. So we're doing pretty good. I love the names here. Nudna is 250 knots, so max 250 knots. We don't need to be going that fast. We're at about 200, so that's the only restriction we've got. Really, it's 12,000 at Jacko, at Inlam, and 9,000 at Jacko are the only two we have to worry about. We are about one and a half miles from Odvod. And there we go. I think it just, is it going to kick us over? And our next checkpoint is Watmu. There's six miles, five. There's our turn. And it looks like it's centered that up pretty good. Okay. So our approach is nicely set. The progress page is looking pretty good. So still looking at a landing at 15.15 Zulu time. That's not bad. We are at 14.43, so we should be touching down in about a half an hour. Now might be a good time if you do a cabin announcement, call back, say, hey, we're gonna be turning on the seatbelt sign about 10, 15 minutes. Anybody's gotta make a last minute trip to the can, there you go. I don't think they use the word can though. Uh, on Logan Air. They're probably a little more polite. And everything else at this point is pretty much set. We're all set and ready to go for our landing. And that really is, if you can be this well prepared, if we were on VATSIM right now, I would be looking at VPILOT and the frequency uh, page on VPILOT to see what's ahead of me. Uh, there were chances are there would be a, a London controller perhaps we would be talking to London Central or South Control right now. There would be uh, a director uh, for approach control. Uh, there might be a tower and ground. I would look to see what's there. And as soon as I possibly can, uh, I, I try to preset frequencies in the standby. Again, this is a two person cockpit. You are busy as hell on these approaches. So if you can, you know, figure out what your next frequency is and preset it as soon as you get kicked to a new frequency. Wow, does that become a massive time saver for you? It does make your life a lot easier to play, you know, preset the frequency game. <clears throat> and everything else is good. Everything looks good up here. Seat belts are off. We'll turn those on in just a little bit. We've told the passengers, you know, you know, final call for the lavatories and stuff. Flight attendants are starting to uh, do the, the, the final walk through the cabin. 
you know, trash bags and stuff. And we got a few clouds definitely increasing here. Hope you had a chance to enjoy the scenery. I mean, that really is one of the things to do, especially if you're a travel geek, if you're an airplane geek and a travel geek. Okay, we got some clouds out here. So one of the things I've had to do is the, um, there is uh, the Phoenix A320, which is one of the really great airplanes in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Apparently the Phoenix A320 has a problem with, um, has a problem with the um, icing system and it causes some real problems. I fly the Phoenix uh, usually on Frankfurt Fridays, which is a really big VATSIM event, and I just can't deal with icing problems, and so I also don't like just turning settings on every day. So right now I've got my icing turned off. I hope they fix that one soon. But because we were going through clouds, we needed to check the outside air temperature in the airplane and uh, make sure, and uh, you know, we could have been into icing, and according to this, uh, total air temperature is minus nine. So we would actually need to be worried about icing right now as we pass through these hot, thin, uh, wispy clouds up here. Uh, the reason that I didn't was, you know, that, that was the reason why. We are now 10 miles from Nedna. We are eight miles from our top of descent. I usually wait until five miles. Our first altitude is 12,000 feet at Inlam and 9,000 at Jacko. So I'm gonna go ahead and dial in 9,000. I found that you need to wait until five miles or less to start dialing this. Otherwise you start seeing the top of descent starts to move. I don't understand what I did wrong there. See, we're gonna to go to the ND overlay and we're gonna switch this now to below. And there is six miles. And we're gonna to go to 9,000 feet, hit the IAS button. Okay, I also like to come on over here and I slide over here and we go out of manage mode. So this is gonna be, and you notice that the uh, uh, bug has turned, changed to green, you know, green blue. Okay, four miles. So 9,000 feet. And again, it's the small number on the altitude tape. 12, 11, 10, and 9,000 feet. That looks good. And look down here, three miles. So what we're gonna do is we'll, re we'll hit IAS and pull the throttles back, and then I'm gonna manually adjust my speed for right around uh, 210 for my landing. Two miles. I think anywhere between one and zero is good. So IAS. We just hit that one. We're gonna pull our throttles now out of the notch and back a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and dial my target speed up to 210. And down we go. Now this is not going to stop us, I believe at 12,000. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. You can see here that our uh, descent deviation is doing pretty good. So pull the throttle back a little more to keep that in the center. There we go. Gentle, really, really gentle and small throttle movements in this airplane. Also the CRJ is really good. So I'm still gently pulling it back, but I don't want to do it too abruptly. Okay, you see I pulled it a little too much. You see how much it jumped there? And it's really kind of touchy there. Okay, that's about as good as I'm gonna get it. That's about as good as I'm gonna get it there. And I really do need to adjust, re recalibrate calibrate the throttles on this airplane. Okay, that looks pretty good. We are at 17,000. I think that we're gonna do really good uh, as far as that 12,000 and 210 knots at nine at good old Jacko. So we're in great shape for this part of the approach. Let's come on over here. Descent checklist is magically popped up. FWS recall, everything's clear, landing elevation. As long as this indicator is blank, 
and there is no, I think feet is, is blue. That means your landing elevation is set. FMS, nav, and perf, I think it's as good as it can be. We have set our decision height. Arrival briefing has been done, although pretty badly, and that procedure is good. Next checklist, I'm gonna just go put that in there now and do have it ready to go. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do devices. I usually do devices around 10,000 feet. So no, I'm backwards on that. I'm gonna do seat belts and then do devices at 10,000 feet. So seat belts now, devices, and reset my heading bug. That's looking good. Another sip of coffee, please. And so far, so good. Our airplane is great, and it really is. I have had so much fun. I think one of the things that's fun about this, several, first of all, it's low, it flies a little lower than the jetliners, it flies a little slower. So you do get to look out the windows and enjoy the view a little bit. I think that that's fun. The second thing is, is this airplane is actually being used. Logan Air flies this airplane. In fact, this airplane, it flies to a little town called Stromness on the Orkney Islands. And um, if you wonder why I call myself the 757 Spy, it's because I like 757s and I've written some spy novels. And the spy novels originally start and are based around Stromness on the Orkney Islands. So, you know, they actually fly this airplane uh, up to uh, Kirkwall is the airport. And this airplane is used other places. The cargo variant of this airplane that they make for FedEx, that actually flies into Ontario, California. And so they do cargo runs with this. And I do hope that one day the developer decides to go and do uh, cargo, uh, give us a cargo variant. Uh, there is a livery. So there is a livery, but it's still a passenger airplane. So I would like to see a cargo for some cargo ops would be nice because those are things that are happening in the real world. And I think that anytime the flight sim world can go and um, you know do things in the real world, I think that that just brings it home more and more. Okay, seat belts, we're gonna check off seat belts now. Landing lights are not on until 10,000 feet. So we got a ways to go there. We are going to be a almost spot on. I'm gonna add just a touch of throttle and see if we can't center that little deviation bug up. We're gonna be above 10,000 feet at our next checkpoint. So at Inlam, we're good. And we're gonna stop at 9,000. And then after that, we'll do the direct two between Jacko and Babku. And that's where we're gonna to go to that Ravsa thing and then do another descent. Altimeters, uh, let's see. Um, the altimeters for us are 7,000 feet. Okay, there's Inlam. We were right at 12,000 feet there. And now you can see it wants to d descend even faster. So you'll notice that your descent changes a little bit when you go to a, a different checkpoint. And there we go with Jacko. We're already at 210 knots for Jacko, so we're good to go there. I'm gonna come over here, update my chart as we come into Jacko. And again, somewhere between Jacko and Babku, we're gonna go direct to Ravsa and descend to 6,000 feet at 210 knots, just like we're expected to. Here we are coming up on 10,000 feet. So 500, we're gonna do devices. So laptops off. You can still use your small handheld device. Reset the heading bug. I think it's kind of hard to see. So the terrain radar, there might be an adjustment to be able to turn that down, but especially with the water here like this. Okay, there's 10,000 feet, landing lights. 10,000 foot cabin call. Now, as we uh, hit Jacko, your airplane's gonna start to slow down. So, hands ready to go on the throttle, 
As we start to approach Jacko, you're gonna notice your speed starting to go down. So it's a gentle push that throttle forward up to hold your 210 knots. Nine thousand three hundred. Still watching, and you're going to know when the slowdown occurs because over here you're going to see they see the yellow, the yellow uh, arrow. That means you're slowing down. So add a little bit of throttle to turn off that little yellow arrow there as you hit nine thousand feet, and it's very very small stuff with this. There it goes. It's disappeared, and we should be holding nine thousand. Up oh, means another one. Originally, I really did kind of get to the point where no auto throttle, you know, with some airplanes kind of freaked me out a bit. Not so much anymore. Oh, we're slowing down even more. More throttle. Oh, now we're starting to speed up. That's good. We're a little slow. We're supposed to be at 210. And here in London, you've got to actually really be at, at, at that speed. So we're, we're relatively close now. As we're coming in over here, it's time to go and do a direct two. So once we're on our course heading, when we finish the turn, we're direct to Nanva. Still turning, turning, turning. And we're gonna do our direct to Ravsa now. So reset our heading bug. Come on down here. We are going to be DTO. And there's Nanva Babku LCE, next page. There's Ravsa, Ravsa, and Execute. And it's gonna take us direct to Ravsa. Let's do our descent. We're gonna go to 6,000 feet. And uh, if, you, if you move the mouse just a little bit, if you're using the uh, little mouse wheel, that's the zoom. I keep telling myself I'm gonna get rid of that. We're at 210 knots. We're gonna hit the IAS descent button, pulling my throttle back. And down to 6,000 feet at Ravsa. And we're gonna hold that for a couple of checkpoints here. And it actually descended us at about 213. So we'll reset that, go back to the performance page. V app, see 6,000 feet was transition, right? So we're coming up on transition. We're coming close. Let's go ahead and set that altimeter. One zero, one zero two five. So one zero two five. And you can see that it also is doing your conversion to inches of mercury. So three zero point two eight. Let's come over here. Three zero point two eight. And everything is now set for our arrival. 107 is our speed, so that's all good. 210 knots. This is nicely centered, so we're gonna hit 6,000 at Ravsa. We're gonna hold 6,000 too. And then we get to uh, do a descent to 4,000 and start reducing our speed. If you've got your charts over here, uh, there we go, and where is the airplane? There it is, so here's our approach. And I usually will take this big map and this is when I'm gonna start zooming the big map in. And that's gonna be my landing map. And then we'll just go back over to Odd Leg. And there we are heading over to uh, Rafsa and Gapki. Even if you know the area, and I've done this approach enough that I know it pretty good, but the thing about this approach and stuff is if you're going to be on BATSIM, I still recommend get your charts ready. Look, the pilots have them. The real world pilots have them out there too. So it's important that you're, you've got them and you're ready to go. Planes flying along pretty good. Our landing lights are on. Oh, it's even got Logan Air on the bottom. How about that? Very sharp. Very sharp. See, we're uh, coming up uh, by the uh, South End Airport. So South End, the holiday town, I guess. There's 8,000, getting a little bit high. Pull the throttle a tad back and reset the heading bug. 
and we just get to enjoy the uh, enjoy the scenery in here. It is now 1500. We should be about 15 minutes from landing. Is that what the airplane still says on the progress page? 1513. We got a couple of minutes back. How about that? Still 210 and still a touch high. So I'm going to pull my throttle back a little bit more. See, we're coming in uh, out of the blue areas, so terrain might be a little more meaningful. So it kind of shows our path along the Thames. Nothing really to worry about here. The lights are good. The only thing we really need to worry about up here is landing light, taxi and landing light. That's the one on the nose wheel. We pop that on uh, when we drop the landing gear. The checklist is already set. Seat belts are good. Oh, landing lights are actually on. Altimeters are checked and set. Cabin altitude is set. That checklist is done. Pretty good. So we can clear that checklist. And I, I got to tell you, with especially you know, when in flight sim, we're flying a bunch of different airplanes that are more and more complex. These uh, interactive checklists like this, right here that are right in front of, boy, does that make your life so much easier. And here's 6,000 feet at Ravsa. We will hold on to that at Gapki. Next altitude is 4,000 after this. Hand on the throttle, get ready for another slowdown. So speeds, it's still at 210 on this. And there goes that yellow arrow. The uh, speed will also change on you uh, if you're gonna make a turn because the wind is changing. We're actually a tad bit high, it looks like. Looks like it's 6,500. So we were actually a bit high. Was it at, no, we were supposed to be at 6,000 at Ravsa. So we're 500 feet too high. And we're gonna be at 6,000 at Gapki. So my next altitude is 4,000. I'm gonna continue my descent. Let's continue the descent to 4,000 feet. So 4,000, we're still in IAS mode. So we'll continue that. And generally this descent works out pretty good that if you've got everything set up the way you're supposed to, heading bug, uh, that you've got everything set up the way you're supposed to, uh, you could actually put in about 2,000 right now. We have a slowdown at LCS01. So I, that's why I don't have it right now. And everything else is pretty good at the moment. The approach in here is really pretty awesome. Uh, obviously London is one of the cities that is modeled incredibly well. We're on about a 40 mile map range here. So uh, this is also a good time to zoom it in just a little bit. And if you can't see it, you can turn off terrain and that's gonna help you see all the numbers that you need. We could also, this is not a hard airspeed. It says 210 or slower. So we could actually start slowing it down a little bit here too, if we wanted to. I think we're gonna hit 4,000 feet just fine at LCE 07. Let's go ahead and put in the next altitude, which will be three. Now, if we were on VATSIM, they would be telling us to go down and we'd be having to hit the numbers, so. So we'll go ahead and let 3,000, which is OSVEV. And well, it's looking pretty good here. 
So our little route up to Thames. Now is an incredibly good time because you're gonna get busy. If you've got a cup of coffee like I do, set it off to the side, especially if you're gonna be reaching for anything around the cup of coffee, that means you might spill something. It's also a good time if you have rudder pedals, if you've been moving around in your gamer chair, go ahead and get ready to do, uh, put your feet on your rudder pedals gently and make sure your chair back is locked. We're a little high here. You can see at the top of my map, there is some blue stuff that's showing up. This is mist approach. So if we have to go mist, that's already got that loaded in there, which is really nice. Super awesome. The amount of uh, information and planning ahead that's available to pilots these days, especially given how crowded the skies are, is really pretty good. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna start reducing my speed a little bit. We're at 210, I'm gonna go to 200. And I generally like to reduce in the airplanes like this and the CRJ, if I can reduce it by little increments of 10 knots, that really keeps my descent on target, which is pretty cool. And that's nice too. So there's LCE 07. I think we're gonna hit the other. Let's go ahead and we're gonna go and set 2000 as our final descent. And that looks good. How about another? 10 knots to 190. Again, it's above two, below 210 now. So this is about a point in time that ATC might be speeding us up a little, holding our speed or slowing us down if there's traffic ahead of us. And most of the time it's slowing us down. So there's 190. We are gonna hit 3000 at OSFEB just fine. So let's pull the throttle back a bit. We're getting a little high. There's 190. Let's go ahead and go to uh, 180 now. And that's actually putting us at the top of flaps one zone. So those little hash marks there are the safe zone for throwing out your flaps based on the, the weight of the airplane and all. We're just gonna go ahead and leave them up for the moment and let our speed go down. And now I'm gonna do one last speed reduction. I'm gonna to go to 170, and that means flaps one. Be ready on flaps one here. You may need to add a little bit of power. It might slow you down a bit. We're actually right on our descent. And we are a little high, but that's okay. We've got all sorts, a whole long way here uh, to uh, get to 2000. So we got a notch of flaps. That's looking pretty good. Nice view of London and, uh, and the Thames, the south, uh, I guess that's more of the east side. And then there is our turn over there. We've gotten a little bit low here. So that's probably not a good thing at the moment, but it also is gonna give us a better view of, the, of London as we come in, so. Okay, and now as we approach 2000, our speed's gonna get a little slower than 170. So let's add just a little power, but not too much to go into that uh, no exceed zone. How about wheels? And a gear. And with that, you're pro, oh, look at that. We were too busy watching the landing gear and our speed dropped to 150. Well, that's probably okay. What's our speed for landing? Speed for landing's 107, I'm gonna make it 110. So let's go another click of the flaps and I'm gonna just bug this to 150 for now. So I'll bug it to 150.
and we'll hold 2,000 as we come in. Starting to see some of the uh, financial district buildings. I think that's what they call them, the shard. Uh, what is it? The cheese grater, the, to uh, the, the walkie talkie. And if you look very carefully, there's the O2 and there's our airport. So there's London City. So we actually get to go over some of those famous buildings. Up, oh, going a little bit slow. I wanted to hold about 150. The hard part is spending too much time looking out the window on an approach like this. Okay, cabin crew has been advised. Landing gear is down three green. Flaps are good. Power management going to take off. Power management is good. True low speed is checked. Uh, and that's going to be your uh, speed um, uh, that's approaching stall speed. Whoops, hit the wrong one. Power management, true low, icing, no problem there. External lights are groovy. All of that is set. And we're a little fast now. I want it about 150. We're landing at 110. We're holding about 2,000 feet. Altitude hold is good. I'm now going to set my landing bug, and that's going to be at 110. 110. It might stop you but based on your flap speed, but that's okay. Unless ATC is there yelling at you to keep your speed up, I'm going to go ahead and start reducing speed a little bit here. Make the map a little bit bigger. Enjoy the view. And this is gonna take us and get us all set up here for the approach. So all of that's good. Let's go to the VOR ILS page. And it did not set 1115, so I'm gonna do it myself. And I usually leave that on the ND overlay. There's the O2. There's the buildings with the cool names. And we're basically now parallel with the end of the runway. So I'm gonna start reducing my speed even more. And there's our turn to final. And let's see, if you look out there, there is the Gherkin, that's the bullet building. The tall pointy one is the shard. I believe that's the, that's the walkie talkie. I don't see the cheese grater yet. That would leave the door open for cheesy jokes and flaps are now full. And I wanna hold about 140 on all this. And you can see that my uh, speed is now bugged to 110. That's a little bit above the landing speed. Gives me just a little bit of wiggle room because boy is wiggle room nice. Speed's right on, up a little slow. I wanted closer to 140. Come on airplane, don't wanna to go too slow. And there's our turn. Okay, that's looking good. Let's make sure it does the turn. It is. And that is an absolutely incredible view too. All the lights are good. Gear is down. Let's also do the nose light. So the light is on the nose wheel too. I guess it doesn't shut off like in some modern jetliners when, it, when the gear goes up. Coming up on odd leg. I'm going to reset my heading bug again. Speed is 135 to 140. That's not so bad. 
There's that big power plant. There's a couple of really cool bridges. I saw, uh, there's the eye. So there is the eye right there, the Ferris wheel. There is Big Ben and Parliament. And it looks like they finally fixed the bug that we had in Microsoft Flight Simulator, where in rivers like the Thames, all the boats were underwater. Now the boats are on top of water, which is really cool. Okay, here comes our turn. As we come on around, Once we get established on this, there's the shard. We don't want to take out the top of that. And I'm going to heading hold, heading hold, grab the ILS. I have glide slope and localizer. I'm going to get help from the approach system. The approach is now armed. And there is the gherkin. There's the walkie talkie. I may, we may have already passed the cheese grater. which would of course leave the door open for all sorts of cheesy jokes, but we need to look out the window and see there is the airport. There is our turn to final. We can see that glide slope is starting to come down a little bit now. Turn to final, last, last reset of the heading bug. I'm still letting the autopilot do most of the work here because this is a busy place to fly. I'm gonna start reducing my speed because our, um, our descent is going to be fast. And so if I can get closer to my approach speed before we start that descent, there comes the glide slope. Now I'm gonna pull back my throttle even more. There's a, the glide slope, speed's going down. Hand on the stick getting ready to take over from the autopilot. And now we're actually thrust idle as we do our, our final descent with a great view of the O2. And our speed is looking pretty good. We're holding right about 115, that's not bad. And we're definitely thrust idle. Some more big cranes over here. Again, I'm still letting the uh, autopilot do work for me right now. Chances are about now you could be getting kicked over to tower. And at this point, I'm also looking to see if there's a ground control and try to preset that. Our speed is, oh wow, spot on, 110. At this point, I would be all set up for landing. The last thing I'm gonna do is look. Approaching minimum. And it just disconnected my autopilot for me, I think. Oh, that was speed. So, autopilot minimum. disconnect. Landing. Minimum. So, still doing a steep descent. We don't have speed brakes on this airplane. Oh, got blown off to the side. I didn't do a good wind check. Let's see if we can get back over here. Now we're gonna have to back taxi. 50, 40, 30, 20, oh, not so 10. good. Oh, not a good landing at all. But we made the, ta the taxiway. Minus 258, that was terrible. But we're still able to roll around. I do have to tell you that this is a fun airport. This chat, this this airport challenges even the best pilots. Uh, I think uh, this is one of the airports where you have to have a special endorsement to be able to um, land here. And it always, I'm always getting, I always get 
Whoops, wrong one. And then parking here is always a good time too. Some of these have been converted to straight in. Some of these are turnaround parking. I think that this is a turnaround or a straight in, I'm not sure. So I think that we do, we turn like this. It could be, I, this is uh, too big for this one. I should have gone to one of the longer ones. By the way, this uh, airport, that control tower, this is one of the airports where they actually have a fully uh, remote control tower. So there's cameras up there, but the uh, people are not actually in the control tower. Now let's go ahead and try the other one. I think this airplane might have been a little bit too long for that spot. So what we do is we come in on the dash line Yep, we're going absolutely slowly. Might need a little bit of power around here. So start our turn, and then a tight turn with the tiller. You might have to use also what's called differential braking. So if you've got rudder pedals, you know you can do the right brake and the left brake. Now we're gonna come up here forward And then we go to this spot and then another hard right turn with maybe a differential braking. And you try and put your nose wheel on that center line. And the real pilots, of course, they don't have a nice little bird's eye view like I do. There's a light pole going by. And then on the spot, and then we're gonna go ahead and do uh, the uh, left engine is gonna go to um, Feather. We're gonna come down here and we're gonna do the parking brake. Let's also do the control lock now. And we could also, while we're waiting for that engine to spin down a little bit, I'm gonna go to surveillance and go to standby. And then also over here on the nav display, that's set to none none so all the radars are off and we can go ahead and now we'll shut down uh the uh, first engine so first engine can shut down and so that's going down there that's pretty good and while that's going on i'm going to go feather on engine number two and with that going on let's also turn off that nose light i'm going to turn on the wing lights because we're going to go into hotel mode and in fact, now it says it's ready. So the hotel mode switch goes on and it should go to prop break. If it does, we can guard it. And if you look outside, you can see the, uh, the uh, props have stopped. So at that point, we can turn off the beacon. We'll do seat belts, devices, emergency exits. Should have turned off the probe heaters because they get really hot and we don't want the ground crew to get burned. So now we have nav lights on and that's about, and uh, wing lights. And at that point, we can come over here, wheel chocks, ground power, tail prop, main door, cargo door, and our doors are open. Passengers are in the back of the plane. They can get out and uh, go right in here to London City Airport, and we made it. My landing was incredibly sloppy. I mean, it put us right over here. This was terrible. So if you zoom in, you can see I touched down half on the runway, half off, and I had to bounce too. Oh. Oh, the humanity, there was a bounce to how terrible. Now, you can also analyze your landing through Volanta and it will give you that. So let's end the flight. And then if we hit the review button, you can come in here and have a look and see just how awful you did. So there was our touchdown and it, uh, let's see, did this record a bounce? This didn't, but it did show me off to the side of the runway. I was close to, was I close to the target? Yep, I was close to where we're supposed to land. 
and this said my landing rate was 310. So, you know, I guess I don't get Oreos for today's landing. But we made it, and nobody was hurt, and nobody was arrested. How about that? And clearly, after a landing like that, I'll say it again, this is not about the right way versus the wrong way. This is just what, what well, mostly works for me. So there you go. I'm going to thank you for flying along. I hope you enjoy this airplane as much as I do. This is a cool airplane, and there's all sorts of great places that we can fly it. So um, this has been a definite great addition for me. And when you go and take a look at the price for this airplane, it's like one of the absolute best deals uh, of an airplane that you're going to be able to get in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's, it's really one of, the, one of the cool things for sure. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked what you saw. If you did, I'm still new on YouTube, so likes uh, and shares are definitely appreciated. Uh, there's a subscription button if you feel like it was good enough for your time to hit the su subscription button. Um, I am over on Twitch, and that is three days a week, 1900 Zulu on, sun on uh, Tuesday through Sunday. If you really like this, I need to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to uh, the Twitch uh, subscribers and gifters. And also, I have uh, recently launched a new uh, channel on Patreon, the Secret Agents, the Special Agents, and the Double O's. You all are the incredible jet fuel in my flight plan. Thank you so much uh, for uh, doing the uh, flying with me and the incredible support. I also, uh, to make it a little easier, uh, there's also a uh, Kofi page too, and uh, links should be in the description. Thanks for flying. I hope you are having a wonderful week this week, and I will look forward to seeing you in the friendly sim skies sooner, hopefully, rather than later. And as always, stay healthy, stay safe, and cheers.